I made a device to help space chairs on a fixed grip chair lift or hangers on a T-bar or teller lift. But before I show you the device, I want to explain why it's important that they're spaced evenly and accurately. So the first problem arises if the hangers are too close to one another, and especially on a surface lift like a T-bar, you could have interference between hangers if one is fully extended and the next one is not. The second issue is an interruption of grooming activities, for example, at the base area or unloading area at the top. If the hangers need to be aligned to allow for a groomer to fit through and the spacing is inconsistent, then aligning the chairs or hangers would be difficult or impossible. So inconsistent spacing is an issue. And finally, the third issue occurs during the initial mounting of the chairs or hangers, and that's if you end up having too few chairs or hangers on the cable and you end up with extra, or alternatively, you hang all of your chairs or hangers and you have a large gap between the last chair or hanger and the first chair or hanger. So the device I made, you can see here in this picture, consists of two main components. First, the brains of the device, and second is the measuring component. This measuring component is mounted to the lift on this L-shaped bracket. That bracket is mounted on the lift, and there are many placement options for that bracket. The measuring wheel should be lined up in the middle of the rubber-coated roller where the cable rides. You can adjust the position of this wheel left and right on the L-shaped bracket. When it's in the correct position, you can lock down these two bolts to secure it in place. Once it is secure, you can adjust the tension by sliding this slider up or down along the aluminum legs and then locking it down with the two knobs on the sides to hold it in place. Let's take a quick look at the design of the device. Here we see two cable glands. One goes to the Hall Effect sensor and the other goes to the lift. There are two additional cradles for batteries. I added those afterwards because I found that the battery cells that I'm using don't hold a great charge in cold temperatures. There's the auto stop relay, backer and five push buttons for the control panel. That's mounted on the back side of the face of the device. There's a rocker switch on the top for power. There are three switches. The first is the start button, the second is the stop button, and the third is the slow switch. Here we have the TFT display and clamps. There's a window to indicate charge status from the battery management system and the battery management system and clamp. And finally, the fully assembled device. Inside you can see the three pairs of 18650 lithium-ion battery cells that are wired in parallel to the battery management system here. The batteries are charged through a micro USB plug in the side on this battery management system. The device is powered on through this switch, this rocker switch up here, and power goes through this step-up converter that boosts the voltage from 7 volts, which is the minimum required for the Arduino Nano Every board. I upgraded from a standard Arduino Nano because this Arduino Nano Every has more memory. This then steps that voltage back down to 5 volts and supplies power to the TFT display here. The display requires 3 volts for uh, the signals, and so there are resistors on the back side of this. Um, that make a voltage divider to step those signal voltages down to 3 volts. 5 volts is also used to check the status of this switch here. This is the stop button. There's also 5 volts going out to the relay to power that. And finally, 5 volts goes out to this Hall Effect sensor, which counts the revolutions of the wheel. The positive side of the battery is connected to an analog pin on the Arduino Nano before the step-up converter. That's used to measure the voltage of the batteries, which ranges from 2.5 to 4.2 volts. And then that's mapped from 0 to 100% uh, to display the remaining battery life. This device is connected to the lift using this heavy-duty six-pin connector. Two of the pins are for the start circuit and connected through this push button. Two more of the pins are for the stop circuit and connected through this normally closed push button. This side of the push button is only used to detect the state of the push button and that's connected back to the Arduino. In series in this circuit here is this normally open relay. 
So the device must be powered on and the Arduino must tell the relay to close in order for the lift to start. If the device loses power, this opens and the lift stops. At any time, if, if either of these relay or push button are open, the lift stops. And finally, the final two pins from the six pin connector are for changing the lift speed from normal to slow. And that's done through this switch here. Once the device is charged and this light turns blue, it is ready for use. These five buttons here are used to control the device, and the switch at the top powers the device on. I'll run through the menu options. First we have some advanced options where you can change the wheel circumference, or you can change the number of magnets in this wheel. We also have the option to calculate the loading interval, but first we need to enter cable length. So let's go back to the home screen, down to cable length. It's recommended to measure the cable length but you also have the option to manually enter a cable length. If we measure it, the first step is to mark the cable. Next, we will run the lift for a complete revolution and stop using the manual stop button, and then we'll save the measured cable length. On this screen, we can see these two red indicators here. Those show the current status of the stop button. This first one here shows that it's open, and the auto stop relay that's inside of the device also open when it's red. If we reset the stop, based on this restart procedure here. It says reset stop. That goes green. Both of those go green. They're now closed and the lift is ready to start. Here we have our length and so that will just count until we stop the lift. And so if that's at the end of our full revolution, we can click save. We also have the option to manually edit that cable length. So we'll make it 1,020 meters. Let's go back to our loading interval option. We can calculate the lift speed based on loading interval and number of hangers. We'll enter our desired loading interval of 8 seconds, and our number of hangers we'll say is 52. Based on 52 hangers and a loading interval of 8 seconds, we have a lift speed of 2.45 meters per second. We also have the option to calculate the loading interval or the number of hangers. If we want to calculate the number of hangers, we would enter our desired lift speed we'll say two meters per second, and our desired loading interval, eight seconds. The nearest integer is 63 hangers, and so using that, it's recalculated the loading interval at 8.1 seconds, and a lift speed of two meters per second. Let's go back to our home screen. We also have the option to do hand operation, so again, we have the same indicators for the stop button and the auto stop inside. We have a restart procedure, lift speed, stop distance, and trip distance. We've already run the lift, so it has recorded that as our trip distance. We have the option to reset that trip distance. The stop distance is the distance traveled by the lift between when the stop impulse is sent and when the lift actually comes to a stop. To restart the lift, we need to press the stop button, reset it, and now it's ready to start. If we run the lift for fewer than six seconds, it won't calculate a stop distance. It will ignore that, assuming it hasn't reached full speed. If we run the lift for more than six seconds, the stop distance will be recorded, and the stop distance is calculated based on the five most recent stops. And every run over six seconds will record a new stop distance. So on that one, our stop distance was 3.59 meters. We do another one. You'll see that the average will be adjusted. Make sure we hit six seconds here. Hit the stop button, and that was shorter, so it should lower down now. 3.14 meters. Reset our stop distance. We'll go back to our home screen. So we've set our cable length. We set our number of hangers in the loading interval option, but we can always adjust them here. 60 chairs. And stop distance. The box around there is green because we haven't run through the stop distance option yet. We do have a stop distance from our hand operation option at 3.14 meters, but the problem is if you are running the lift at a higher speed in your hand operation mode than you will be while you're mounting chairs, then it's better to 
measure out a stop distance at the speed that you'll be using for mounting. So to measure the stop distance, you start the lift, it'll stop after six seconds, and then you just save that distance. So again, the restart procedure, reset the stop button, it's ready to be started. And get a countdown, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the auto stop relay inside. It'll measure that distance as 3.04 meters. And now that box is green showing that you've measured the stop distance. You can also manually edit that distance. If, for example, you come back from lunch after having turned off the device, you need to re-enter all these numbers. When we're ready to begin, you'll see that this box is green around begin, and so it'll allow you to begin hanging the chairs. If this device loses power, those numbers for stop distance, cable length, and number of hangers will all be erased, and so you'll need to re-enter those manually. So if the battery dies, or the switch is hit accidentally, or a lunch break is taken, having the option for manual re-entry re makes things faster. So it would be a good idea to take a picture of the screen or just jot down those three first numbers. Those are the important ones. It also tells you your spacing between chairs and your loading interval at two meters per second. That's our most recently entered desired loading interval. It gives you a loading interval of 8.5 seconds. You have the option to adjust the first hanger number if you've already hung some chairs. You can say you want to start this time at chair number 21. But you cannot start at 121 because there are only 60 chairs. So we'll go back down to chair number one. And we are ready to begin. So we'll mount chair number one right now to restart the lift. Follow our restart procedure. And now it's ready to be started. Our facing is 17 meters. And so we have 17 meters to our next one. We're ready to start the lift. Since our stopping distance is three meters, as soon as we come within three meters of our next chair, the auto stop relay will open the circuit and bring the lift to a stop. You can see the stop distance was adjusted down because that was a shorter stop than the previous one. And so now our new stop distance, 2.69 meters, we can either go 1.34 meters forward, you can see here, um, or we could just mount in here. If we decide to move 1.34 meters forward and hit the stop again, it hasn't changed because we didn't run the lift for six seconds, and now we're only 21 centimeters from our desired point, and we can just adjust on the line. So. We'll reset stop button and we'll run to our next one. Once the two next comes below 2.69 meters, the auto stop relay will be triggered. And again, that stop distance was a bit shorter than previously, so that was adjusted down. We're 78 centimeters off. If we want, we can adjust that. So now we're 11 centimeters off. But that stop distance should be more consistent with the lift than my hand. This procedure continues until all of the hangers are hung on the cable.